Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, my name is Thomas Husson. I am a, a VP and Principal Analyst at Forrester. I'm based in Paris. And Forrester is an independent research and advisory firm. What I'd like to do in the next 10 minutes or so is to uh, walk you through why consumers are greener and greener, why they demand sustainable brands, and why firms who, that do not meet this demand will get their brands destroyed. So, I mean, this is not a new phenomenon, but I think the crisis has accelerated this trend. Um, and uh, in fact, the focus on health has shifted consumers' perception. I think climate change is no longer perceived as an external threat, but it's no part of our individual lives. That's why I like this cartoon so much. I think it tells the story about what's going to come next with climate change and, and biodiversity collapse. And consumers, citizens, have realized that change. Um, if you take a step back, the focus on health has created more intimacy with uh, the way we perceive climate change. The, what we eat, medicine we ingest, the cream we put on our bodies, the clothes we wear, all of that is part of our individual daily lives. And while we are aware of that, while we try to fly less, while we may be ashamed when we fly or when we want to eat less meat and do these changes and recycle plastic and so on, we also face uh, you know, some contradictions. Each of us has their very own individual contradictions. Uh, even when you look at activists like Greta Thunberg, when she had to fly to New York City for this very emotional speech at the United Nations Climate Conference, uh, you know, we, we have these contradictions. This is inherent. And some consumers also face um, cognitive dissonance. Consumers would like to buy more, uh, you know, local products, greener products, but sometimes they cannot afford it because, partly because of the recession, uh, they don't have the purchasing power. So I think we have to admit the fact that cognitive dis dissonance will create more frustration, and that's something brands should be very careful about. Uh, we believe that distrustful and frustrated consumers will demand more from brands. As you can see on this chart, this is particularly true in France and in some countries where consumers are more likely to distrust brands, to consider that they will not walk the talk. And not just the average consumers, this is also a very dangerous for brand equity when you look at uh, you know, green activists, they will force even the most sustainable brands to reevaluate risks and to actions. For example, Oatly, the Swedish vegan milk company, uh, suffered a bad press from green activists when some of them realized that the companies had ties, well, that the Blackstone uh, shareholder had ties with Trump and with some activities in Amazon and, and deforestation. So that matters for any brand, but for brands who commit to protecting climate change, uh, this is very, very important to be transparent and to do what you say. Because uh, overall, what we've seen is that consumers' preference to buy from brands that are committed to reducing their impact on the environment has almost doubled in some countries, particularly in Southern Europe. And as you can see on this chart, this is less important in the United States, but more recent surveys have shown a shift due to the new Biden administration. So preference for brands that are sustainable is definitely increasing. And let's also recognize that when we ask consumers about uh, corporate social responsibility, and when we ask them, what is the number one CSR? What, what is the most important element to you? Again, in France and in Italy and in Europe in general, uh, protecting the environment or the position of the firm on climate change is the number one criteria 
while it's only the seventh criteria in the United States. So consumers, especially in Europe, but more broadly, globally, are urging firms, are forcing firms to act on environmental sustainability. And there are a bunch of companies that understand that. New entrants, investors uh, want to act uh, ethically, but they also understand that there is a green business opportunity and they manage to combine ethics and profitability, sustainability and dollars. Uh, Oatly, for example, I mentioned this company, uh, they're uh, valued about $10 billion and they're aiming for an IPO. Allbirds, uh, Blah Blah Car, the French sharing company, car sharing company is valued $1.5 billion. And across industries and verticals, there are many, many, many different players in different verticals that are tapping into this opportunity and that are almost built sustainable. And these firms, these new entrants will force traditional businesses uh, to deeply transform themselves, to evolve their business models. I think for traditional businesses, this is no longer about um, defining a sustainability strategy. This is no longer about compliance and communication. This is really about integrating sustainability in your strategy and executing only daily, embedding sustainability everywhere, the way companies did and are still doing with digital transformation. So yes, there are some iconic brands like Patagonia, but there are other many traditional businesses that are evolving their businesses uh, to truly shift and embrace sustainability and embed it into every single business unit. Uh, from tech companies like Microsoft to luxury players like Caring or banks like BNP Paribas. And, and even Unilever is quite advanced in this approach of uh, embedding sustainability into its business model by measuring the impact on costs, as you can see here from this quote from the CEO of Unilever, but also into tapping into new business opportunities. And there are ways to manage profitability and sustainability. Uh, Danone, despite the recent governance crisis at the company, was profitable. And I think as well understood, and the new board has actually confirmed this, this, this purpose, this mission that the company has, but also this new transformation plan to operate at a local level. We truly believe sustainable global brands will have to pivot to a new operating and multi-local business model. And to do this, they have to be authentic. And Danone was quite authentic in its approach. And in the long term, we believe brands like Groupe Rocher, whose purpose is to reconnect people to nature, are more likely to succeed because they move from storytelling to story making. They co-create with consumers, with partners, and with employees. This is really critical. But close the gap between the brand experience, the client experience, the customer experience, how consumers perceive your brand, and the employee experience, how employees perceive your corporations and how authentic you are. And that's going to become a competitive advantage. I recently had the honor to interview Chris Leong, who is the CMO at Schneider Electric. And Schneider Electric is, according to Corporate Nights, the most sustainable corporation in the world. And she clearly told me, well, you know, it improves our performance. It enables us to innovate. But it's also one way for us to become attractive as a brand and to attract talents and to make sure these talents will want to stay loyal to Schneider Electric. So it clearly creates value. And I just want to add and sum up things here by saying, yes, consumers will drive change, but let's not forget about the potential of technology. If you haven't read uh, you know, Bill Gates' book, I think it tells a lot about the power of technology and how it will fuel an out of the box marketing cre creativity. Again, it's not about compliance. It's not about communication. It's about pivoting to a new business model. It's about innovation and shifting to new business models. So the one message I wanna leave you with 
is that sustainability is the new competitive advantage. It will spur the next wave of business transformation. So thank you very much for your attention and enjoy the rest of the conference.